Hello, everyone. This is Mike Young with a plant-based diet.org, and I am joined today by Rohini from the UK, and she is one of our food and nutrition advisors with the nonprofit. And I know that Rohini, you're very much into whole food, plant-based eating, lifestyle as medicine, and of course, we've got the coronavirus going on, so we have lots to talk uh-huh. about. Why don't you give us a little bit of a background first on yourself? Thanks so much for having me on, Mike. Um, yeah, it's all right. So I'm speaking to you from London, England, where uh, we've recently gone into lockdown here. And I think a lot of people have you know, been stocking up in the last few weeks. Unfortunately, some people have been panic buying. But today, I'm just going to kind of give people a little bit of an idea for what they can do to help themselves as much as possible with following a healthy lifestyle, particularly with a focus on diet. I um, I have been a nutritionist for a few years. I had a change in career. I worked in marketing for the food industry before, so very oh, different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, so I have my own practice here in London, and I really kind of advise people on how to transition to a whole foods plant-based way of eating. Now, a lot of them are not um, vegan, but many of them are, and they're sort of trying to move away maybe from um, the more processed vegan foods to eating more plant foods and whole plant foods. So um, the, the one, you know, the one surprising thing about this um, pandemic is really that a lot of the most shelf stable and pantry friendly staples are in fact plant based. And I think that that a lot of more people are now cooking with like lentils and grains and yes. things like that. I'm seeing in my local supermarket the things that were always very fully stocked and I would always be one of the few people maybe buying them. They're now completely gone. And um, well, that does make me happy that people are at least are buying lentils and things as well, though. That's a good sign I think well I have a question I always kind of thought or maybe assumed I don't know well I've heard the saying the longer the shelf life the shorter yours but but at this point in time we need to potentially buy foods that have a longer shelf life but are still healthy we need to boost our immune system so what types of foods can somebody buy that are going to remain stable in someone's home for a long period of time yet still will help our immune system and, and, and uh, help keep us healthy. I think that's a great point and it's important not to sort of tarnish all foods with the same brush here because I think there are definitely some foods where um, you know you, you'll see the expiry date and it will be sort of you know 10 years time and that doesn't exactly seem great but there are lots of foods out there and as food scientists have become more um, experienced we're able to preserve foods safely without using all the extra sodium sometimes or the extra oil and preservatives and things like that so it's important not to demonize all foods For example, a lot of frozen foods, such as frozen berries, a lot of them are actually frozen at the time of harvest, so they're incredibly high in some nutrients. And the same Mm -hmm. applies for a number of other processing techniques. So um, it's, you know, we we need to really bust those myths at a time like this because people are just not able to get as much fresh food as they'd like. I mean, I First, personally, I'm using up what's in my pantry right now. And I think it's a great time to look at what you have in your pantry and realize that you can make amazing, very simple meals that are very nutritious still. And then I am using frozen vegetables, frozen foods, some canned foods. Like I use them, I have here, so I have like beans, for example, and I use BPA free cans or glass jars. These are. um, lupin beans for example so i think those sorts of things are really great and i know that i'm getting all um you know meeting my nutritional needs and um, obviously if you can look at cans and check that they have no added sodium or oil or sugar that would be ideal but right yes. now people need to do the best they can and they if it's causing a huge amount of stress that should not that's not healthy either so um i recommend you know making a simple grocery list if you are doing sort of a grocery shop once every food days or once a week at this time and um, seeing what's available a lot of stores unfortunately now don't have as much food as we'd like so we have to be full of that and of other people right actually one of the things you mentioned was interesting to me you mentioned frozen at the time of harvest and yeah I always know like if I was to pick something right in the field and eat it it tastes so much better how do you know if something is treated like that frozen right away and it's ripe how do you how do you know Unfortunately, don't exactly know, but it, it tends to be the case for things like berries, for example. I live in London, England, where if, if I go and buy some berries here in the supermarket, a lot of the times there are blueberries have come from Peru. That's sort of the main place that we get blueberries. 
And now, by the time they've flown over here, not only is the carbon footprint massive if you're someone who's environmentally friendly, but also yeah. berries, the vitamin C is already just, you know, gone at that point. So um, frozen blueberries are a great alternative. And mm -hmm. there are certain cases in which processing foods in that way actually increases their nutritional value. So yeah. um, for tomatoes, fresh tomatoes are rich in vitamin C. And it's true that sort of canned tomatoes have less vitamin C generally. Um, but actually processing tomatoes tomatoes such as into um, tomato sauce like passata actually is higher in lycopene which is um, an, a very powerful antioxidant and there's some studies showing that it's particularly powerful for prostate cancer prevention and things like that so um, let's not tarnish all foods with the, the same brush but yeah I think where you can a mixture of fresh and frozen would be ideal that's what I try to do personally so I um, try to eat fresh fruit like apples and pears and things that are local and seasonal and things like that to me because they're higher in nutritional value but I also buy some frozen berries and things like that to add to my meals and, and things like frozen kale and frozen, frozen spinach they're very easy to throw into a curry or into a smoothie and um, unfortunately things like spinach really doesn't last long in our fridges so right, our it's good to have that option there I think that um, that's that's um, you know a good option for people I think a mix is great and if you've got things like bananas and they're going very ripe and spotty that's a good time to freeze them and then they make really creamy thick smoothies or banana ice cream which you could look yeah. up a recipe um, and but i think that those are really great yeah yeah that's that is way better like a banana and ice cream in my opinion and you please let me know what you think than the like the the faux animal product ice creams that are plant-based i look at some of those ingredient lists and they are very long and i don't recognize a lot of them yeah, a lot of the time they have a lot of emulsifiers and different things. And particularly if you've got sort of um, issues with di digestion, like if you have IBS or something like that, they can sort of wreak habit. But, you know, for most people, they're fine as a very occasional treat. They're not really right. something to have on the daily. So if you're craving something cold and smooth, I think the frozen bananas with frozen berries and, you know, you could add a dash of sweetener like maple syrup if you wanted it to be sweeter. But I think that's a great snack for kids for sure. Okay, okay yeah, good. Definitely. So you mentioned in your practice, you talk with people that are in all types of lifestyles and it sounds like yeah. you're meeting people where they are, which is, which is great. Really, you need to do that. I have a question though, like if you're in a time like this with coronavirus and we understand that our immune systems need to be at the highest level, what would you recommend to, to keep our immune systems up at, at that high level at this point in time? I think that it's important to try and eat as many whole plant foods as possible, get the variety in if possible, and you have access to these foods and, you know, eat the rainbow if you can. So try to eat different mm -hmm. colored fruits yeah. and vegetables every day. I think that that's really great to get a range of the phytonutrients in, um, as well as supplementing if you are on a plant-based diet with vitamin B12. And now, because we're not really going outside much, I also take my vitamin D as well every single day. And especially if you're living in the North, than latitudes like the UK. It was a sunny day today, but it's actually um, not powerful enough for us, our body to manufacture vitamin D. So um, I think eating all of that, I, there is some research to show that fermented foods is very helpful for the immune system. So adding in a, you know, a serving of that would be a great thing. So something like sauerkraut or kimchi, they would be good things to add into your salad or your Asian stir fries, for example. Um, but I think, yeah, eating as cooking from scratch, I think one of the things is obviously this is devastating what's happening right now around the world but you can take one one positive that can be taken from it is that people are cooking more at home and cooking sure. more from scratch so learning some new, new cooking techniques brushing up on your knife skills learning a couple of new recipes learning how to cook without oil for example or cooking right. more plant-based recipes I have a lot of recipes on my website, rahinibajekal.com, and I also post several recipes every single week on my Instagram. So um, at the moment, I'm doing lots of recipes that are just like plant-based staples. So just using simple things. So I've got things here like tahini. I think that's like a great thing to make quick, simple salad dressings or um, sauces and um, things like nutritional yeast. So just two tablespoons of nutritional yeast have four grams of protein. So all this little mm. helps, you know, to make sure that your especially for older adults they do require slightly more protein and it's very easy to get all the protein you need on a plant-based diet but 
right now, I think these sorts of things are very good to add to the diet and for sure for a lot of people who can't make it out of the house easily. Okay, what is your Instagram? It's at Rohini Bajakal. So that's at R-O-H-I-N-I-B-A-J-E-K-A-L. And I'm very active on it. I post every, like almost all the food that I make and lots of nutrition tips and, and share lots of other resources from brilliant people such as yourself. And, you know, I, I want people to be able to access this information right now because it's such a critical time where we need to knowledge share. And people, um, you know, we, ha- we have an opportunity to try to help ourselves as much as possible now and look after each other and learn how important lifestyle is. Obviously, one single food or supplement is not going to prevent you from getting a virus and it's irresponsible of any nutritionist or dietitian to say that because that's just completely untrue and um, the New York Times right. has reported that these supplement sales are skyrocketing and wow. that's really not where people need to be spending their money they need to be sleeping seven to nine hours um, you know finding ways to quell the anxiety that is all around us right. at the moment and eating a healthy plant-based diet or mostly plant-based diet as much as they can Okay, so so there's no magic pill. You, it's the overall lifestyle and and what you do. But let me ask you another question. If well, diet is very important. I say that's probably one of the most important components, right? Extremely important. Yes. If someone is not following the proper diet, they're hardly eating any plants. Is it worth them suddenly changing? I mean, how long does it take to to have positive results in the body? It has instant results. So we know that, that the results are uh, instant. Obviously, you may not you know, have the same benefits as someone who's been doing it for a really long time, but it's never too late to start. Usually when I transition clients, I tell them, particularly to get used to the amount of fiber, I tell them that they, you know, they can transition over a few weeks or a few months. Everyone's body is different, so it depends on what your diet was before. But right. um, you can start eating more plant foods straight away, and really the earlier the better. So the first meal I recommend changing to a plant-based meal is breakfast. And that's great because all of these come in Tetra Packs, which are very shelf-stable. This is um, organic soy milk, and it just literally contains soy and water but you can get um lots of others like hemp milk and things like that in the stores and a lot of people too right yeah a lot of people are trying these milks right now because um obviously cow's milk doesn't last very long and and um hopefully they're going to be trying oat milk and soy milk and all of these other great milks so i think breakfast is the easiest meal to make plant-based get in those oats those berries bananas nuts seeds um, dried fruit is good and it's in small amounts um, and some plant milk. I think that's a great way to kickstart your plant-based journey, but then also crowd out those other foods and add in the good ones. So um, if you're not used to a lot of fiber, unfortunately yeah. only one in 10 British adults gets enough fiber at the moment, which right. is only 30 grams. So nine out of 10 aren't getting enough fiber. So if you start up on all that toilet roll and you want to use it, then I recommend- <laughs> You'll need to um, use it. <laughs> then I recommend like gradually adding this in. So for these beans, for example, you would add in sort of like a, t- a tablespoon every few days, add in two tablespoons, three, gradually, you know, end up being, I can eat a whole can of beans or a couple of cans with no side effects, but for other people, they might be less. Lentils, red lentils, split red lentils are an yep. amazing one to start with because they're very easy to digest. So split red lentils are very quick to cook and you can make amazing dals and curries and stews and soups yes. with them. Yeah, actually that's one of the things that I have bought recently that I've not cooked with before. You mentioned starting new recipes and trying new things. Yeah. And that's one of the things I've been trying and I, I agree. Uh, that's a great food to have. To Definitely. Have and they're so high in protein and fiber and you, you know, one cup of chickpeas has 18 grams of fiber and um, of, of protein sorry and um it's it really packs the punch so i think legumes they're so cheap they're so affordable they're everywhere they last for months up to you know years even in the larder so um everyone should be going and you know filling their baskets with that at the supermarket really yes you okay you mentioned fiber and yeah. adding it in slowly i mean my experience has been that the body, even if you're doing something wrong and transitioning yeah. to something right, doesn't like to change, right? So it'll kind of, you'll notice things, some things and say, oh, well, this isn't, someone might say, this isn't right for me. Like, I'm, I, this has never happened before. It's not good, but that's going to be a transition, right? There's always going to be a, sure. a transition. That, that's normal? Is, is what I'm asking? That's normal. And, you know, 
people um, often, you know, especially attuned to any changes in their body when they are switching their diet around, but not all changes bad. Obviously, um, like I said, I recommend easing in and adding things in rather than immediately sort of um, cutting everything out. If you add in more colorful vegetables, more grain, more whole grains, more mm -hmm. beans, more lentils, more nuts, all of this, you're, you're going to have less space for the animal products like the meats and the fish and the dairy and the eggs. So that's a better mindset. And I always say to people, think of it as a positive thing. This is a positive thing that you are changing your lifestyle for the better. So if you have a positive mindset, mindset you are going to see nothing but positivity there and get excited about new recipes new cuisines from around the world you know stocking up your your cupboard and saving money probably on your grocery shop as well and um, if you've got some you know flatulence or gas to start with there are lots of tips that I've shared on my site so adding in things like cumin and um, asafoetida which is an Indian um, spice that really helps with bloating soaking the beans and lentils those are all tips just a few of the tips I've got lots of them but these okay. can really help you adjust and um, a lot of people might not know how to cook these products but there are loads of YouTube tutorials out there so right. just get on youtube and have a look right okay you mentioned cost yeah i know that if folks are going to be buying the the vegan products right those tend to be more expensive in my opinion but the, the things that you're talking about are not they're not products they are more whole foods right, Is that yes. right? exactly Okay. Um, no, definitely. The more convenient vegan foods can be really expensive. So things like vegan cheese and stuff like that is vegan magnums. You know, they are tasty, yeah. but they're very, very expensive. <laughs> and they come with like a lot of plastic, a lot of packaging. And um, I, I don't think they're the most healthful ingredients. So right. in terms of chick chickpeas are the cheapest protein source in the world. So in terms of bang for your buck, they're a great one. Um, but all of these foods, you know, some of the, the country, all these countries around the world, like I'm Indian, my family is Indian and most of the diet is really plant-based and formed on these staples and the food is delicious so the most you know important thing I'd recommend um, investing in is a good spice cupboard because you really need to add like flavor to the food and we know that herbs and spices can boost the antioxidant capacity of a meal by up to 200 percent so I'm very right. liberal with my spices and right. I like the way that they taste and you know it's hard to get these fresh herbs right now and um, if you're lucky enough to have a little herb garden all you need is a windowsill really to sprout or to have herbs around sprouts again living foods full of micronutrients they're great to add to your salads a big handful herbs like basil coriander parsley and um, thyme and um, that that's great but spi dried spices and herbs are just as good really and um, so add them in as much as you like and they're very cheap again okay. so yeah just experiment okay you mentioned sprouting sprouting okay i've bought a lot of times recently sprouted quinoa there's yes. some sprouted grains you can buy is yes. there an advantage to buying those and what is it if there is one definitely i think um when, when you sprout grains or sprout those foods they they're generally um the nutrients are more bioavailable because the they the number the amount of phytates which is sort of inhibit the absorption of iron and calcium and things is reduced mm -hmm. so um in the us i actually noticed you have noticed you have a lot more sprouted products than we have here in england so okay. i think sprouted oats and things like that they're just a lot easier to digest and again the nutrients are are probably more available so if you can um, buy them or sprout them at home i think you know a sprouting um a sprout i don't know what they're called i guess a sprouting jar they're very cheap and um, but now right. amazon and all these things aren't really delivering much so uh if you've got access to buying sprouted ones then definitely recommend or even just soaking i soak all my lentils and beans for like six to eight hours and um, that's the sort of standard it also reduces cooking time which is convenient because you don't want to spend ages slaving over a slow mm. right now Correct. Okay. One thing you mentioned previously earlier in this discussion was cooking without oil. Yes. I've had to get used to over the years and yeah. I'm not much of a chef, but one of the things I thought was a little different in the beginning part anyway, was, was sauteing with water instead of oil. Is that the way it's normally done? If you're sauteing without oil, you use water? 
Yes, um, well, you can use a bunch of different things, and I really recommend it. Again, I learned it from YouTube, but having a look at some of the people doing it, because I was trying to wrap my head around it at first and think, how on earth do you cook without olive oil? Isn't that supposed to be healthy? Um, right. But no, you can cook, you can saute with vinegar, you can saute with wine oh. if you want to go all out. You know, obviously, why I'm not recommending it as a health food, but it evaporates and, and adds some flavour. Um, oh. I like sauteing with some vegetable stock, some homemade vegetable stock that sort of adds... Right. Um, and flavor. I also like cooking my grains sometime in low sodium vegetable stock and that gives it a really nice lovely flavor but when you're sorting it's just you know it's you just got to be patient and not burn things and it's really very easy if you it dries up you can just deglaze the pan with a little bit more hot water it's um it's it's quite simple it just it kind of get you need, you need to get your head around it yeah, um, yeah. but the tastes just as good it's not the oil that adds the flavor that's mm -hmm. all the other things like the um herbs and spices like i mentioned and um the, the seasoning if you use things like dulse flakes or nori flakes and things like that to add a little take um, a little kind of more flavor yeah okay yeah and i also noticed too when you're using a water or i like i like the suggestion of vinegar or vegetable stock low sodium like you said uh, yeah. you have to keep adding it though it's not like the oil never goes anywhere right it seems like you put it in you're done right but with you're these things that. They evaporate. You can like watch it for a little bit longer. And um, a lot of people like using an instant pot. That's not really a popular thing in Europe, but um, right. I could be wrong. But it's definitely, I don't have yeah. one, but um, I've seen lots of instant pot recipes and I know that those are really handy um, to have. But again, yeah, you just got to be patient and learn how to do it. Just um, watch the, the pan for a little bit so you don't burn it because obviously burnt food is not ideal for health and um, yeah, ruins the flavor completely. Okay. Well, I mean, thank you so much for all of this advice. And I feel like right now, as I'm sure you probably feel, is a great time. It's a great motivation for people to make this change, you know, because we have, we have time. A lot of people have time on their hands. They, they, they may have less money. Like you said, the, 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 the whole plant foods are probably like the least expensive way you can go. You're just going to take a little bit of time to learn how to cook them. So it goes great with what's happening right now. And then, of course, we want to boost our immune system. So it's going to help with that too so it's definitely um, and people you know just really they don't need to worry too much they just need to try and buy what's available if they can buy fresh that's great but a mixture of fresh frozen canned and um, you know things like that and um, just checking that there's not much added sodium salt or oil to the food and um, getting involved in like learning about the different products I've been snacking on a lot of like popcorn which is a whole grain oh, yeah. and that's really great you can make that at home and make a nutritional yeast topping so that's great for movie night if you're you know spending more time at home now which we all should be um so yeah I recommend well, well the popcorn do you pop it or do you eat it the way that it is no, no, no. It needs to be popped. So yeah, I pop it on the stove. And there's actually like an oil-free technique that I use. And then I make my own topping with like nutritional yeast or I use an right. Indian masala. And that's really nice for when you're watching a movie and you just, you know, want something to snack on, but you don't want to go for the, you know, the, the candy or the chocolate or anything. And I oh, just yeah. think that this is the time to experiment with more, um, you know, wholesome plant-based snacks. And I think popcorn is one but you can also make really nice things like if you've got overripe bananas you can make banana bread with dates instead of using sugar and yeah. black food and things as a binder so this is the time to try all those things you've always wanted to do and um you know try that try eating more plant-based if possible and i think that it's something that everyone can do it's just about making those simple changes to your lifestyle and if you're already plant-based then that's great but you can always you know take things up a notch introducing oh, yeah. the fermented foods and um learning new recipes i think i'm always learning i think i probably learn a new dish almost every week so i think uh, there's a lot of exciting things out there and take your b12 and vitamin d and um, yes. make I sure that are, thanks for the reminder i will do that today yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know unfortunately we're not able to enjoy the the sunshine but hopefully the more we do this the more we all stay home the quicker we will be able to um you know get back out there but it's really important right now that yeah. people stay home and stay healthy and uh, one thing about that one last thing before we go that varies depending upon the time of the year the angle of the sun and things like that right so in the summer you don't have to worry about so much but in the in the colder months you really have to be concerned about it right Definitely. But I think um, there are certain groups that have to take vitamin D all year round. For example, people mm. with um, you know, darker skin, such as myself, or people who are housebound, such as people who are elderly and not really you know, getting out of the house much, which is going to be a lot of us this year, to be honest. So we right. really need 
to um, get that taken care of. And one last thing I would mention is if you are buying fresh product, produce at the moment, it's important to wash it with some, if you have some um, produce, there's special soap that you can get for vegetables and fruits. But if not, I think a little bit of um, normal soap would work as long as you rinse it off thoroughly. But it's important if you're buying sort of loose um, produce, such as red bell peppers or apples or something that may have been touched a lot in the store. Right. It's important to be mindful sure. of that, obviously. Yeah, you don't know where it's been, but so you need so, to make sure that's clean, yeah. Definitely. And, and it's important to, um, yeah, again, not make food a source of massive anxiety. It shouldn't be stressing you out to the point where you're not living your life. But yeah. this is actually very simple. Following a plant-based diet is very, very simple. It just requires a little bit of an adjustment in terms of learning a few new things, but it's very exciting. I have been thriving on it for years. My family has been thriving on it for years. And mm -hmm. I honestly think it's one of the best things I've done in my life. So yes. if you were, if you're on the, you know, you're, you're teetering on the edge, you're not quite sure whether to go for it. I say, go for it. DM me if you've got any questions or write to me. I'm very approachable. Yep. I'll put and your website, a link to your Instagram and your website here on the video. So we'll amazing. have that thank right you. below here. And um, well, thank you, uh, Rohini. Thank you so much for being with us. And, you know, food and nutrition advisor for a plant-based diet.org. And of course, you've got your own, your website and Instagram. We'll have those linked below. So you guys can just go thank there you. and follow her. And I've got lots of simple recipes as well. So um, very, very simple, cheap and affordable with some nutritional info on my site. So go and check those out if you're looking for some inspiration as well. Yeah. Okay, great. So hopefully we will get to talk again in the near future. And when everyone has taken this time to change their lifestyle and is moving forward, right? <laughs> Definitely. Well, yeah, thank you for all the work you do, Mike. And, um, and thank you for having me on. It's been really nice to chat to you and um, talk to you more about, you know, what people can do to, to help themselves and help their overall health at home. You're welcome. Thank you.